Hi there, Ben Rollison here with a quick start guide for the 3D Extruder Tools Panel. There are four tools at the moment, that may well increase in the future, but for the time being I'm going to demonstrate the current four to you. Here I have a piece of 3D extruded text, which appropriately enough says duplicate. Let's assume that we're making a project where we need to make several words in the same style. If I just use the standard After Effects duplicate to duplicate the layer, or shortcut Control D, and then just move the new one down so they don't overlap, then I don't get the result I'm looking for, because if I come into the base composition and change my text to is fun, then they both change, because both layers are instances of the same structure. We don't want to just duplicate the layer, we want to duplicate the structure. That's where duplicate comes in. So let's undo that and come up to the script UI panel, click on duplicate and a little window pops up. You need to have a valid 3D extrude layer selected for duplicator to work. And we're talking about the main 3D extrude layer here, not the reflector, the controller or the light layer. Otherwise you'll get a little warning, like that. The name defaults to the name of the 3D extrude you're going to duplicate. And notice if you change it and then throw the focus back on the duplicator window, it changes back. It's very important with 3D extrudes that comps and layers all have a unique name, but you don't have to worry about that. Duplicator makes sure everything is named uniquely for you. I'm going to come back to the next box and skip ahead to the checkboxes. Duplicate control layer, light layer and reflector layer, if existent. Well, if you're duplicating into the current composition, then you can create a layer that has its own controller, light and reflector layer by having these boxes checked. Otherwise, the new layer will share those layers with the original layer. That's cool. That means you've got less layers and you can adjust all the extrudes at the same time. Time-saving fun. So let's have a custom name. Let's uncheck duplicate control layer and make a duplicate. Let's uh, move the layers so they all sit together. Move the duplicate down so it doesn't overlap. and turn off that second light. It's a bit bright. Let's just click through to the base comp and try again. Change the text to is fun, like that. And now let's have a peek back in the main comp and you can see that both the extruded texts are different. Also, you can see that I've created a new light uh, there was no reflector on the original, but I'm sharing the original control layer for duplicate. So I can put them both into edit mode with one click. How neat is that? Now let's make another duplicate, but this time let's select another comp. And there you go. You get a list of all the comps in the project that aren't part of the currently selected 3D extrude structure. I'd avoid duplicating a 3D extrude into the structure of another 3D extrude though, unless you're completely insane. OK, we'll leave it with the default name. You'll notice that you have to copy the control layers if you're duplicating into another comp. Hit duplicate, and let's have a look in another comp. There it is. Notice that Duplicator has given it a unique name by putting two after the original name. And again, let's just click through to the base composition and change the name to Duplicated. And sure enough, Duplicate has become Duplicated. Back in the original comp, we have our two other texts still. So there you go, 
three 3D extrudes created from one. That's duplicate. Very useful if you're working on a project with multiple 3D extrudes. You can just set up one and copy it everywhere you need to. OK, so next up is center reflection. Centering reflections is really annoying. And that's just as valid a statement if you're doing it on set with a real camera as if you're doing it on screen with a digital one. Fiddling around, trying to work out where to put the reflected object so the camera can see it in the face of the priceless and oh-so-shiny thingamajig that you're filming. Wouldn't it be nice if you just had a button called Center Reflection? Well, with 3D Extruder you do. Let's just move our text around a bit to about there basically somewhere where we can't see the reflection anymore. Make sure that you have the main 3D extruder layer selected and then hit center reflection. Pow! Reflection centered. One more time. Pow! How cool is that? Let me just show you what's happening here. Let's just set up a custom view Let's turn our reflector layer on so we can see it and just line it up. I'm just going to undock the 3D extruder window and move it down here too. I, I use a pretty small screen size for these screen captures so it can all get a bit cramped a bit quickly. Now let's rotate our text again so we can't see the reflection. We hit the center reflection button and you can see that the reflector layer is physically jumping to the point where the camera can see it. One more time. Watch up here. Nice. Okay, fix expressions. As you probably guessed, there's quite a lot of expressions at work under the hood of 3D Extruder. They're rather robust, you can rename and restructure without problems, and you shouldn't ever need to go and delve around inside them, unless you're completely insane. But there are one or two limitations of the After Effects expression language that you can't get away from, and so there's a couple of things that you could do that might cause errors. The first of those is that you can't have duplicate layer or composition names, because then After Effects won't know which layer or comp you're talking about. It'll take a guess all right, and although it might very well guess right, it might also guess wrong. And that might mean expression errors. Likewise, if you delete an essential layer, say a controller layer or a, or a light layer that 3D Extruder is using, then you'll almost certainly get expression errors. If that happens, of course, a quick Control Z will undo the offending change, but it won't recompile the expressions. That's where Fix Expressions comes in. Let's just take a 3D Extrude and make an error. We'll delete the Reflector layer from this comp. And sure enough, a good old-fashioned expression error. Or several, in fact. So if you ever do delete something you shouldn't, or you give a duplicate name by accident and that happens, all you have to do is Control z to undo your little misdemeanor. And with the main extrude layer in question selected, hit Fix Expressions. You get the message fixed, and the reflection jumps right back to where it was and starts behaving as it should again. The fourth and final tool is called Current to UI. As I explained before in the Quick Start Guide, 3D Extruder is a two-stage process. In stage one, you set up and create your 3D Extrude using the settings in the user interface, and then you go in and you fine-tune your Extrude to get it looking exactly how you want it. Now, up here in the interface, you've got the option to save and manage your own presets, but as a default, that will only save the parameters you set in stage one, the things that appear in the panels here. What about if you want to save the changes that you made in Stage 2 in the After Effects interface? Well, that's where Current to UI comes in. Let's use the Glossy Hard preset to extrude this text. 
But now let's change a couple of key settings. So, on the controller layer, let's put the front bevel intensity to 22. Let's put the reflection strength to 99. And let's change the reflection distortion to 11. OK, we want to save that extrude just as it is. So with the 3D extrude layer selected, hit current to UI. Uh, you'll see this message. Then you can come up and save the preference. Uh, let's call it Gloss 2. You can't see the other options in the UI, but they're there, hiding away. Let's prove it. Let's apply the new Gloss 2 setting to another layer in another comp, which I have handily set up here. And let's go and have a quick look on the controller layer for those settings that we customized. And sure enough, front bevel intensity is at 22. The reflection strength is at 99, and the reflection distortion at 11. Bingo! What Current UI does is look through your entire 3D extrude structure, reading everything it can, and then invisibly copies that information into the user interface ready to save. So that's the tool panel for you. I hope it's helpful. My name's Ben. Thanks for listening.